making the space feel more like a home has always been important to my family and I. And having a fence has been a key component, giving our home a sense of personal space and safety. Because my wife and I enjoy working in our garden, it's often that our little ones are playing and running around the yard. And as a parent, it's made me feel a little nervous not being able to have 100% eyes on them. To give me some peace of mind, I felt having a fence would be a good start to set safety boundaries to reduce the chance of an accident, especially from running into the nearby street. Hi, I'm Rata Sochenda, and in this video, I'll share the process of building a privacy fence from start to finish and show you ways you can make it look like the pros installed it. Today, we are building a full panel privacy cedar fence. I chose to go this traditional route because after driving around, it gave off the best curb appeal and I've been told it's considered a good neighboring fence. I then called around for quotes to see what it would cost to build a 70 linear feet section with the gate and I was quoted about 8,000 total. As someone who enjoys the satisfaction of building my own stuff the way I want it, I decided to take a leap of faith like I do all my DIY projects and build it myself. I then drove around the neighborhood to compare which ones I thought were well built versus the ones that were built poorly. I pulled over once I found one that I really liked and asked the homeowner if I could take a few measurements of their professionally installed fence. I also went into new housing developments to measure a few more for good measure. This would help me determine the average total height and the fence post spacing needed. Like always, I drew it up in SOLIDWORKS and played with a few different layouts and to help me determine exactly how much material I would need. I also used an online calculator to give me an, another point of reference. Before I could order any materials, I called 811 to help locate and mark any buried utilities so I don't accidentally dig into it. Good thing I did, as there was one near where the fence would go, which meant I had to be extra careful there. Next was to source the materials to build the fence. I wanted to find the same professionally commercial grade material that the other companies quoted me, and luckily I found a local fence company that also sells to residential buyers or DIYers like myself. I know in the past with other building materials, this wasn't always the case. Most of the time, I found out that they would only sell supplies to contractors or at a commercial level, which I never really understood. Anyways, I'm glad I found this company because they specifically carried the Jumbo 4x4 pressure treated post over pipe. Jumbo 4x4 post meant it actually measures 4 and 8 by 4 and 8, not that 3 and a half by 3 and a half post you see at the big box stores. And the post over pipe means wood post over a galvanized pipe. The main advantage here is that you have a longer lasting fence post that won't rot as fast as the traditional wood fence post because only the pipe end is in the ground and the wood is above ground. Well, you might be thinking, well, it's metal. It's going to rust eventually and break. That's somewhat true, but then compare that to how much faster wood would rot out and break. I mean, look at the fence post used at the prison yard or schoolyard. Most of the time, there are a type of coated metal fence post that is built to last. As far as tools, the main things you will really need is a post digger, leveler, some string, and something to cut wood. In my case, to make things go faster and accurate, I was able to borrow most of the tools from my sister. But looking back, after building the fence, a circular saw would have been all I would need to cut the wood. The first thing I did was string it all out. I used some marshmallow stakes that I had laying around to mark out and align the string. Then measure seven and a half feet and mark where I would need to dig the hole for the post. I continued marking every seven and a half feet on center. One thing I would have done differently here is level the string, then also mark the string seven and a half on center. This would keep the perpendicular distance of each vertical post exactly the same. Versus what I did here is that I followed the contour of the ground surface. Next was to dig out the hole for the fence post. I first used a manual post digger to start the hole, which would help guide the power auger from drifting from center. Sort of like a center punch, I guess. 
to get a six feet wide and two feet deep hole, I used a four inch bit on a powered auger. I dug until I hit a rock, then switched over to a manual digger until the hole was clear of rocks, then switched back to the power auger. I continued to switch back and forth between tools until a hole depth of two feet was reached. During the entire fence build, this was the most time consuming or hardest part. It was running into those large rocks and roots I had when there used to be trees here. Luckily, I had my little helpers to help me excavate. Next, I filled each hole up four inches with all purpose gravel or either 10 times with a garden hand shovel. Next was to set the post. I first started with the straight side between my yard and the neighbor. For the first post, I started at the corner. I made it flush with the string line, then set it so that the base of the wood was about an inch and a half above ground. Then poured the concrete per the manufacturer. This particular concrete mix does not need to be pre-mixed with water. You also don't need to add any additional supports to the post while this sets because it's co it compacts the hole and sets in 30 minutes. It took about one and a half, two bags for each hole. To do the next post, I installed it at the far end. Doing it this way would keep the other posts between a line and straight with one another. We continued working through the day until nightfall, setting the remaining posts, squaring each one, leveling, and making sure it was flush with the string line. This worked out great as it would give the concrete even more time to cure overnight. Also, one post is missing because I decided to change the fence layout slightly. I didn't like the look of the fence gate at an angle when looking at the house. Instead, I changed the gate layout to be perpendicular to our house and then I wanted the fence to be perpendicular to the retaining wall here. This presented a slight challenge to connect this side to the gate. It was going to have a slight angle or curve to the post, which meant I had to clock or turn the remaining post to make a seamless transition. The next day we started installing the 2x4 cedar railings. This is what the pickets will attach to. I made the lower rail flush with the bottom of the posts and I know it's more susceptible to rotting because it's close to the ground, but aesthetically it looked the best. In this scenario, I think pressure treated lower rails would probably be best. I screwed them in using three and a half inch screws. For the upper rail, I got my wife to give me an extra set of hands. I measured and marked each post to help ensure the upper railings were parallel with the lower rails. I also used two speed squares to help me accurately mark and set the upper rails. And now the fun part, installing the fence pickets. Because I was working with about 70 linear feet of fencing, I decided to screw them using one and three quarter deck screws. If I was to build a much longer fence, then I would have used the nail gun with galvanized or stainless steel fencing nails. I installed about three pickets at a time and checked to make sure they were level and to measure to see if they were the same distance at the top and bottom. And if I was off, I'd make slight corrections as I continued. I also made them flush to one another as each board over time would dry and shrink, revealing a eighth to quarter inch gap. Then for the last board, ripped it to size using a table saw or and or circular saw. You were so almost, consistent. Almost perfect. Yeah, almost you said perfect. it don't matter. You said it what happened matter. to your line? I was just like, huh? You said it don't matter. Good job, babe. <laughs> That's it? That's how you build a fence? That's you know? Why. Yeah. Alright, let's go grab the other pieces. Yeah. Installing picket after picket was probably the most satisfying part of the project. 
because it started to look like we knew what we were doing. Next was to trim off the excess of each post. I did this before installing the top plate because it gave me the room I needed to use my speed square as a guide for my circular saw. Then for each fence panel, installed a 2x4 top plate and finished out the trim work using 1x4 cedar boards. This top plate will provide a cap and the 1x4 trim covers up the top and bottom ends of the pickets providing a clean look. After working out the kinks, I installed the final post and you can see, I turned it slightly to follow the contour of where I would adjust it to link up to the post that was set for the gates. Now let's move on to the moving parts, the gate door. For the gate door, I went something about four feet wide. I think the standard is about 3 feet, but I wanted something wide enough to clear my kids ride along quads and future proof it if I needed to bring through any light duty machinery. I wanted to have the gate level as much as possible but it left a huge gap at the bottom. I compromised a little bit to be somewhat parallel with the ground. I then measured the shortest horizontal distance of the gate opening and then subtracted 3 quarter to get my total width. This will provide clearance needed for the door to open and close and account for some of the sag from the weight of the door gate. I began pre installing the door on my homemade fixture table and use a diagonal support to brace it. Then install the door frame. I used clamps and had my wife help me initially hold it into place. Then place a jack underneath to help lift it up to get it to the exact marked height. Then install the hinges. Um, I end up actually using a total of three to be on the safe side and I added a horizontal support to beef it up. Once the door opened freely, I felt pretty good. Then I installed the pickets. Then installed the heavy duty gate latch. Then I notched out a channel to clear the gate latch bolt head. Because I knew the gate would be a high traffic area, I added additional boards to the post closest to the house to give it more rigidity. This would help take the abuse when the gate is being slammed closed. Then lastly, due to the tight tolerance, I used this as sawzall to trim the remaining post. Then capped each post using 6x6 six six post. To have the gate door automatically closed behind me, I installed the gate spring. After adjusting the spring to my liking, the gate door was finally complete. Now with everything complete, let's take a final look at the before and after of the transformation while I share my closing thoughts. The whole project took about one week on and off to complete. In total, I spent under 2000 to build a 70 foot linear wall fence using higher grade fence materials. This included screws, cement, and wrenching the auger to complete the job. With the new fence, I now feel a sense of personal ownership of my yard. To my surprise, it's helped me want to upkeep my yard. In the near future, I do plan on staining it with a product called the Ready Seal, and I plan to build my own anti-sag kit for the door gate. Now I enjoy spending more time in my yard playing with my kids and gardening with my wife.
But most importantly, having a fence gives me peace of mind knowing that my kids have a safer place to play in. If you're looking to build your own fence using these ideas here, I've created a detailed diagram that breaks down the project along with the links to the tools and the materials I use to complete it. If you have any questions, ask and I'll do my best to answer. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and subscribe for DIY projects like this. With that out of the way, time to get to the next project.